actually seen them put people on their backs, carry children out through this area right here. Okay, I don't know if you can come just a little bit further, but um, the, the water has rushed all the way into this complex here and is flooding some of those floors. These roads here are impassable. The firefighters can't even get their vehicles in there. And here's what they're doing. They're bringing these folks on police buses. The buses are then taking them out of here to somewhere safe. You can see these people are grabbing whatever they can, whatever they will need this evening. Blankets. Lights not and working. And there's trees and things like that. This not that there's anybody to have a light for. They don't know when they will be able to get back to this complex here. Now, I have lived there's in Orlando 20 down. plus years. I have a morning here in Orlando. I have never seen flooding like this. We left from downtown Orlando. I showed you last night the tree that was on my backyard. But when this we were there, nowhere near as bad as Charlie. were just fine. This morning when we left, and Yet. came through, there are car stuff all over downtown Orlando trying to get in. We, we could be halfway down done down here. Kind of Go on through, guy. To, uh, the four away. The four away is clear, but getting there, there wasn't a lot of trees All there. Right. You can see here. Look what's ah. happening here. People going out. Four by four. Uh -huh. like this is an unbelievable rescue. I have not seen uh, so many of these happening all at once here in Orlando. Those roads you could not get through. People were being uh, helped by neighbors getting out of their vehicles trying to get through the water is rising into some of those downtown garages. Uh, places like Lake Davis and Lake Eola are both kind of rising. Lake Davis has now flooded uh, some of that area around the four away. But this is some of the worst here that we have seen. I have seen rescues before during some of the Another other Another tree down over here. We just keep getting full after Lake's full. Lake's way up above and its normal level. To get people out of their houses. Probably two feet up. Huge rescues. There are a lot of people back here who live here. And you can see, look how far this water goes. This isn't even, you know, the complex over here. This is the road next to it. All of these vehicles right here underwater. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six links vehicles right now taking those people out of here and these are the ones that are still here we have already seen some leave of people in here it's just an unbelievable rescue here these folks uh will not be able to go home for some time uh it, it's definitely uh definitely uh worst case scenario here at this complex shannon thank you so All right, much incredible perspective i know you have been around here a long time uh, and so you know exactly how unprecedented this all is. What else are you able to see there? Because we know that uh, some of the law enforcement agencies do have those armored trucks. Uh, have you seen any of those vehicles or is it simply uh, too difficult for them to try to get to this area right now? Because it's we see them trying to get those residents through the high waters there on, on stretchers. Yeah, they decided at least here. I have not seen those vehicles, but remember, we left downtown, and some of those vehicles would not be able to get down the roads around. We're gonna go the other way. The, the vines and the trees are so. I we mean, we sometimes have with high water our vehicles, here. making sure we can get um, the usual suspects. Get through those. So we have not seen those vehicles. We know they are out here, but at least for this, I think because here on Semeron, uh, look around here, Carrie. Just a minute. You see Semeron. It's clear, right? There's no water on the road here, so it is easy for people um, to get down here. Hey, Ashley and Pat, um, it, it, it's a little bit easier to get down here. Like so they down. Need to get there, at least their fire trucks and those links buses. At least for them, this Line's is kind okay. of a, a best-case scenario, right? Lines for, like, okay. At least for the because they can actually get their vehicles on this road main road. There is no water on the road, so at least they can get to here. And they just have to walk inside, uh, inside there. But they were, Charlie, I've seen it really carrying some of these people, you know, in stretchers and out on their back because there are so many residents who live here. They didn't know. Water they were across the road to here. I don't we'll slow down that, so we don't uh, flood anybody. Luckily, we're at the intersection. Uh, 
Nope, I think they're okay. That's an abandoned house. No, it isn't. And lights are on. Buses, these bus drivers coming out, uh, helping this community. We've seen this before. Darlene, you know about this community. You know what happened during Pulse. You know what happens during other natural disasters. This community shows up for everyone. And you can see right now that that's happening here. Um, some of the elderly folks would not be able to walk in this water. It is deep enough where it is a struggle to get through there. You can see rescuers are going very, very uh, slow trying to get there. Yeah. There is no way go that some Iris. of these residents would be able to um, to walk through that water. Shannon, uh, this is heartbreaking. Uh, this is truly heartbreaking. Water across the road uh, we're here. Watching, uh, these live evacuations happen. This is a nursing home um, th that is someone's grandmother, uh, someone's grandfather, um, an aunt and uncle. Coming up on uh, as Shannon said, uh, they didn't know they were going to have to leave. Uh, we had um, Chief uh, Stone down. with Orange County Fire Rescue on with us a short time ago. Shannon, more than 100 residents there. Yeah, They're we're trying clear to here. Get this is out absolutely of there. And, full and, uh, water. You see the walkers. We see the wheelchairs. Water across Fifth I'm Avenue. Also, there. I just want to mention this, Shannon, because I, I know dishes. you know uh, this area very well. Uh, indeed, Orla Vista also seeing similar scenes as this. And I just received a text from Orange County of Fire Rescue. I was asking you, Shannon, about those armored vehicles. Um, Michelle Guido with Orange Whoa. County. Um, Sheriff's Office telling me that they are now conducting some of the similar high water rescues there in the Orla Vista community uh, right now. These scenes we're seeing, uh, this is devastating. Any any rescue, any evacuation is difficult, but when we're Small when they're dealing with the an elderly here, like this, we have some of those mobility and issues, and you can pill, see so how careful they're being so the dishes are not in such water, a critical road time. Level. They're trying These to get them out of there. Really well. They're well. telling us the winds are picking up, those crews responding, the so they are here. trying to get them in there quickly. Shannon, do you have any idea uh, where they're taking them to the shelters? Thank you. Uh, some of these people may not be going to shelters because I see fire rescue well, vehicles. Down, Shannon, can Central we Park find down if some of these folks are going to... Okay. Tell me where you're, you're transporting these folks. Where are you taking them to? Uh, so Freedom High School. And that's where the shelter is? Yes, ma'am. Tell me how difficult this is right now. Uh, it's very difficult with the winds. Uh, you know, calling in people through the storm, asking for assistance, and most of the pain uh, here we are on boats to try to get them to the, mm -hmm. to the buses. Now, we, you and I have met before. You are kind of uh, hey, the boss when it comes to this fleet uh, operation right here. Yes, very clear. Yeah, that's right. Now, the best road I've been on, including Kepler Road. Here, 